Hey guys, it's Fleetwood Matt here, and I'm coming back with uh, another pro am video here. Um, this is another full game pro am video, and uh, in the beginning of this video, you see that my team is kind of like struggling a little bit. You see that I'm not having a really good game myself, and uh, basically, like we come out on top in the end, and. Uh, this kind of shows you that even if you struggle early in the game, you can, as long as you're, like, you continue to focus and just play good, good ball, uh, you can come back and win. You don't have to always be up in the first quarter to be on the winning side at the end. Um, a lot of it's persistence, but like you see, I got blocked there, and so, like I said, I was having a really bad uh, first quarter in this game and uh, this is uh, basically you can see right there I, I have a C teammate grade with two fouls I got blocked um, only have two points and one rebound so I'm not playing a very good first quarter here I do get a chase down block there which also forced the turnover so that that was a good that was like a step in the right direction there so uh, once again, for anybody who hasn't watched any of my other videos on 2K18, um, my archetype is the rebounding shot creator. He's 6'10", 220 pounds with a max swing spin and max shoulder width. Um, and uh, at this point, he is, uh, well, in this game, I think he's still 90 overall or something like that. Um, at this point right now, he is 91 overall in my game uh, uh, some of these videos might be like like a week or two old uh, maybe less than that but um, yeah basically um, this is my uh, rebounding shot creator my small forward build that's uh, shot creator primary and rebounding secondary Um, in this game, what am I against? I think I'm against like a another sharpshooting slasher or slashing sharpshooter. And um, yeah, it's a that is one of the builds I do see quite often. It's it's a build I see almost every game. Um, I I play against a lot of those like inside outside threat uh, archetypes and um, they're all right like I, I I usually beat them because I've played against so many of them so when you when you play against like quite a lot of them you, you know what they're trying to do and uh, you know a lot of their tendencies and what like what they use to uh, throw you off and beat you so um, yeah. I'm not, like, maybe if uh, you don't face a lot of them, then maybe they're quite good, but I've faced a whole lot of them, and I know how to, I know how to play against them, basically. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, I mean, like, I, I've said before, like, I don't really, uh, I don't really like the slasher archetype per se because um, <coughs> because of the small amount of area that you have to uh, you have to guard but like the uh, like the sharpshooting slasher and the slashing sharpshooter uh, that's a little different because you have to guard out to the three-point line basically because they can't shoot the three um, so that perimeter threat alongside with the three-point uh, or, I mean the the slashing ability and the the ability to dunk and finish inside. Um, that's what allows the uh, that archetype to be like. I say it's le legit. Um, it's it's something that you can use to be successful for sure in this game. Especially, I mean, if you get a good team together, like pretty much anything can be good um 
you just have to build your team the right way and a lot of uh what like basketball is is it's basically like one team versus another so you have to be you have to be solid like all five guys uh, on your team on the floor at once like and um really it is a collective effort uh you can't do it alone and uh not really many people out there can there are some people who are really good like as like individual players but uh, even they need teammates as well and they need guys who can like stretch out defenses and like uh like they need outlet passes just like um to keep defenses honest basically so no, they're not always getting double teamed um yeah so like pro ms n not really any different like you got to have five guys who are all uh working towards the same goal which is winning the game and um <clears throat> like most teams like there there's a few things that uh well always help the team and so <clears throat> the things that always help the team are um, like good ball movement so passing doesn't hurt but um, like I'm not like saying go make a playmaker but like uh, as any player archetype that you choose you can it's pretty easy just to move the ball like uh, passing the ball doesn't take much effort as long as you're finding an, like a good safe lane um, then you can get, you can move the ball pretty easily and pretty quickly. Um, so yeah, you want guys who are willing to move the ball and then you also, you also want like guys who can rebound. Uh, and that's like one of the, that's one of the key ones for me. And that's why I made a rebounding shot creator is because you, you need guys who are going to get those boards, <coughs> especially late in the game. Um, when guys are missing shots and you'll see a lot late in the game like in the fourth quarter third and fourth quarter um guys will miss like wide open so there's a lot of rebounds to be grabbed in those in the second half of the game um so having guys who can rebound the ball is uh really really key to any team and then uh having perimeter shooting as well is also really good for any team because uh being able to stretch the floor just allows you to be able to score inside a lot easier. Um, like you, your lane's going to be a lot more wide open um, for drives and cuts. And like, if they do decide to like collapse and clog the paint, then what you can then you always have those like outlet passes uh, <coughs> out to the perimeter, and you can get j just like open three point shots for free. And if they leave enough of those alone, then you'll sink them with the three ball. Um, but you can't rely entirely on the three. Like you have to be, uh, you have to be able to get a mix of threes and twos. Like, and um, like as far as uh, like shooting the ball goes and like stretching the floor, like you don't need to always stretch it out like all the way out to the three point line uh you do that because y it punishes them more for like collapsing the d right but like you can still punish them uh from the mid range as well like two points is is still two points uh obviously you would prefer to have the third point, but if you don't have the third point the two like the getting those two points is still like really really critical to like your team's success. So, um, like being able to stretch the floor is like, it's not only three point shooting. It's also like mid range shooting as well. Like or deep mid range shooting can be, uh, can be very deadly and very helpful for a team. And, uh, and the reason I say like deep mid range shooting is because, um, the deeper you are, like the farther away you are from the paint, anybody who is collapsed in it's going to take them longer to like run out to you and contest the shot like if you are just like um a mid-range shooter like a like straight up mid-range like you can't go anywhere close to the three-point line um guys are still going to be able to like get out on you even if they are collapsed like 
some guys are fast enough to run out and contest that, especially like lockdowns who have good lateral quickness. They're going to be able to like come out on you and contest the shot still. So um, the deeper you can get, like obviously the better your chances are of making that shot as well because uh, the collapse defense will just be further away from you. Um, yeah, and then uh, beyond that, I think uh, what a team wants is uh, like y you really do want all your uh, the members on, of the team to be playing good defense. Uh, you don't have to have like amazing defensive stats per se. Like um, you don't have to be like a shot blocking machine. You don't have to like steal the ball every time, but um, playing good solid D so like contesting shots uh, like good hustle plays uh, boxing out things like that like um, those are very important things like just playing good defense in general like you can see like here like I'm not giving that guy any space no room to operate basically like you have to do stuff like that you have to basically get in their way and you have to like you can see I didn't let him have what he wanted there like he he tried to pump fake and I didn't bite and uh I got the stop so yeah like having guys like you know like I said you don't need to be a defensive archetype to play good defense um but like that being said like the defensive archetype has um they have really good badges and like having like one or two guys like I I think like one guy on your team, uh, usually one of your bigs, uh, because they get the the defensive, like the lockdown bigs, they get uh, rim protector, and so like rim protector is a really 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 useful badge because it works even when you're not like close to the guy, right? Like it, if the guy is like trying to finish inside, and you're like stretched out to the perimeter, if another dude is inside trying to stop that shot it's going to make it harder like it's just going to make it harder for them in general um the rim protector badge is extremely extremely useful to a team especially in pro-am and then uh like defensive stopper is also really incredibly useful um and then like i also think the glass cleaners badges are some of the best in the game as well like the the lockdown and the glass cleaner like the two defensive archetypes uh, like big man archetypes like I think uh, they're the they have some of the best badges in the game like they're a lot more useful than the badges that you get from a lot of the offensive archetypes um, unless like I mean y you can find a way to like make your offensive badges be extremely useful but I think in general the defensive badges and like the the glass cleaner badges are like the most useful and the most handy and you're always finding that you're using them um but yeah and then so like but like you don't need to be a defender like i said to play good defense uh if you're playing good defense you you can still get stops um you can still get blocks you can still get steals everything like that uh you just got to play good d good positioning is one of the main things and uh, also good recognition and like helping out like your teammates when they get beat and stuff. Uh, like I said, pro am is a team game, so it comes to it comes down to the collective effort of the five. So yeah, you can see that uh, we're starting to play a lot better now here in the in the third and. Uh, we've climbed back up now we're up by four so um i myself am starting to have a much better game and everyone else is also having a better game um and yeah the main thing is like nobody left no and we stuck with it and we kept playing our style and like and uh asserting our dominance and what we wanted to do in the game and it's starting to work out for us here in the second half. Um, but yeah, and then you can see like, yeah, there I get a good shot contest. 
like that kind of thing like that kind of d is is really key like making sure that there's always somebody out on the shooter and uh there's always somebody on ball like if there is nobody on ball and like you have the option to either stay on your man or go on ball like go on ball trust me because it is very important that you do that um there's it's i cannot stress enough like how important it is to have uh somebody playing defense on ball because like we're talking about a game here where if they are within the th the three point line like pretty much anybody can make that shot so if you're leaving them alone and they have the ball like i mean also like if nobody's getting them on ball then they're just gonna like take it as close as they can and they're gonna try something inside or they're gonna pass it to like a big man who can like basically they're, they're gonna clear a path for their for their bigs and uh they're gonna help their bigs score inside which is also you know it's something that you can't allow in this game defensively if you want to be successful another thing about uh, defense is um, you want to play for contact so like uh, if you have like the bruiser badge per se right like you want to be you want to be rubbing up against guys you want to be like always uh, playing physical with them um, like because that is one of the uh, the the most useful in my opinion defensive badges is the bruiser badge so you really do want to like uh if you have that badge you want to like try to like make use of it by like playing physical and playing through contact and like um basically getting guys to like uh rub up against you and things like that like pushing guys around like like i just did there like trying to stop that dude and then yeah, and what you find is, like, if you keep doing that, even when you have, like, a poor early game, you're going to come back in the game sometimes, like, just simply on the fact that, like, guys are tired and they can't score. And they're also ti too tired to defend you as well, so... Um, and, like, not only you, but your teammates also, so... Um, that's one of those things where, like, when you... If you have it, like, on your archetype... Uh, you want to really take advantage of it like you want to you want guys taking advantage of those badges so like you see that I was like setting a really really good screen like those screens make those guys tired um, yeah and I think uh, that's another thing if you're playing against like a lockdown or like a two-way player um, you want to try to avoid getting in contact with them and you want to like if it's your guy like if your guy is the defensive archetype on their team um you want to like stretch him out like what i do when i'm against like two ways and uh lockdowns is i'll like just stand in the corner because i can hit the corner three i have the corner specialist badge uh, and i'll just wait and if they want to go help out in the paint then they're going to leave me wide open on the th on, in the corners and uh they're like even though they are lockdowns and they can run fast they're not going to be able to run fast enough to contest me because my guy's 610 so um he's just going to shoot over whatever late contest you have coming at him and uh so that that's like the best strategy against like lockdowns is just park them in the corner and give them the ultimatum of um, working against your teammates or holding you off that corner right and holding you holding you off the score sheet from like getting those corner threes and that's that is the most effective way to play a lockdown is you really just want to stretch them away from the action because um one thing one thing that makes the lockdown really really dangerous is the fact that when he gets into like 
a group of guys he's affecting all those guys with his badges with his like defensive stopper badges and his like uh like he'll have like rim protector and he'll have um like bruiser and everything like that right so you do want to like you want to minimize how much that stuff affects your team um and so the best way to do that is like like in my case because i am a shock like a shock creator um i'll stretch him out to the corner and give him that ultimatum of okay you're gonna either help in the paint or you're gonna let me shoot open threes from the corner and uh yeah that a lot of times they just they respect you and they'll just stay in the corner with you and and they'll have to watch they'll just have to watch their team get taken apart by your team or the other way around um and yeah you're not going to get a lot of action when you do that but like as far as like uh s stuff on the score sheet and whatever um but another reason that you want to do it in the corner is because as a well for me particularly because i'm a rebounding shot creator um i can read what the team is doing and when like i don't have to like really move that much right and uh when i see that they're gonna commit to like the attack or to like a shot then i can quickly dash in and try to get a rebound so yeah uh so that's how i play uh like lockdowns and if you uh can shoot the corner three that's how i suggest that you play a lockdown as well like if you're playing against one um it just helps your team out a lot more like not having that lockdown around them like constantly bruisering them up and like uh because uh what, what lockdowns do is they negate badges and they drop your badges to like lower le like lower tiers of badges um so you're going to be like less less effective all around if that guy's around you um and that's why you really want to keep him away from your team and like like have him just focused on you specifically and like uh in in a in a way where he's not really doing anything like because like the more he does the more dangerous is going to be for the team so you really want him to want him to keep him like uh just like away from the action and not involved the best way to do that is stretch him to the corner yeah and then um another thing you can do uh like to help your team is stay on your men or like uh like especially if your guys a shooter like if your guys a shooter like if you're against a pure sharpshooter and uh you're not like glued to him by the time he's past the half court line you're not playing the right way like you're not you're not defending him the right way because as soon as that ball comes to him if he like he i've seen guys hit like close to the half court line i haven't seen like i've seen like f like freak shots like beyond the half court line but like uh i've seen guys who can actually hit like close to that like where that uh the p is for the pro m <laughs> or where like the m is like where the that corner arrow uh like guys can hit that shot like especially the pure sharp so um you got to respect that and uh if you're playing against like a pure sharpshooter like you got to be on him like anywhere beyond that half court line like really you got to be like right there with him um wherever he goes beyond there and uh yeah like if a guy hits you with a screen and you see that you like one of your teammates picks up don't keep following your guy you gotta you if a guy is switching for you you gotta pay him back and you gotta switch back because his now his man is gonna be open and he's gonna get the defensive breakdown if you go back to your guy so that is or like i mean you you'll get that defensive breakdown or he will get it like one of you two will get it and it's not a good thing for your teammate grade it's not a good thing for your team's teammate grade and uh you yeah you ideally want to like have uh, a higher uh average teammate grade than you than the other team um yeah, you can see now i'm up to an a plus here and 
we're pulling away at the last little bit of the game here. Um, but yeah, and uh, yeah, and then like if your guy is like an inside outside guy, um, you got to make sure that you're holding him, you're holding him to the perimeter, but like making sure that you're sticking with him on the perimeter. Um, so try not to let him blow by you. Like if he gets it, uh, then you got to ride his hip. Um, in the case of like if they are like driving past you and they're like a pure sharpshooter you want to stay behind you make sure that he goes in front of you before you start going because uh, that way you can hip ride him um, if you don't do it that way then what he's gonna do is he's gonna do the snatch back three-point shot which is like the cheesiest thing well anyways that's the game and uh, I hope you guys like it uh, like and subscribe and I'll see you again next time peace out bye